He's the weapons industrialist who became the frightening and insane arch nemesis of Spider-Man. You're pathetically predictable. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will explore the comic book origins of Norman Osborn, otherwise known as the Green Goblin. As with most comic book characters, there are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. We have chosen to primarily follow the storyline that unfolded in The Amazing Spider-Man number 14 and which was expanded upon in issue number 40. First introduced to comic book fans in 1964, the Green Goblin was originally conceived as an ancient mythological monster who was freed from an Egyptian-like tomb. However, this remained unofficial and was never formally alluded to in print. Eventually, this oddly dressed villain not only exchanged his turbo fan powered broomstick for a bat like glider, but was also revealed to be industrialist Norman Osborn. The father of Peter's friend Harry, Norman was the head of Oscorp, a weapons manufacturer. His wicked transformation was revealed to be the result of having personally tested a serum designed to enhance a soldier's physical abilities, healing factor, and intellect. While seemingly successful, it had the side effect of causing him to lose his sanity and fall victim to mood swings and violent hallucinations. Soon after, Osborne modeled himself a goblin costume, based on the fictitious monster he feared as a child. Using it as a means to stir up fear and panic, he began aspiring to become the boss of all organized crime in the city. During the course of one of his many battles with the city's web-slinging protector, the goblin managed to become the first ever foe to uncover Spider-Man's secret identity. Knocking Peter Parker out, the goblin captured the hero. He then revealed himself to be Harry's dad, the same man who Peter Parker had seen as a father-like figure. Intent on a climactic battle, the Green Goblin was defeated when he was knocked into an electrical wire. This burnt his costume and resulted in amnesia. Following this, Osborn slowly recovered from his injuries, once again becoming the kind-hearted man that Peter once knew. However, he soon became troubled by the emergence of his repressed memories. At first, he believed that the Green Goblin was nothing but a hallucination. However, the persona soon restored itself when he viewed a police presentation on supervillains. Returning to the skies on his glider, he sought out revenge on Parker by threatening to harm Peter's Aunt May. Foiled once more, and exposed to one of his own psychedelic bombs, he soon fell victim to amnesia once again. Eventually, Norman would stumble upon his old goblin hideout and continue his vendetta against Spider-Man. However, he once again lost his memory from the shock of discovering that his son had overdosed on drugs. This recurring plot gimmick eventually came to a horrifying conclusion when Norman took up the mantle of the Green Goblin one last time and threw Peter's love, Gwen Stacy, from off the tower of a bridge. Tragically, although Spider-Man was able to catch her with his web, the sudden jolt from being caught snapped Gwen's neck. Not only feeling responsible for Gwen Stacy's death, Spider-Man was also denied revenge during his final battle with the Goblin. In an attempt to impale Spider-Man with his glider, the Goblin impaled himself instead. Despite this untimely end, later stories revealed that Osborn's body eventually healed itself. His son Harry also donned the mantle of the Green Goblin. Harry! You knew this was coming, Pete! And billionaire fashion designer Roderick Kingsley found and retooled his suit and weapons to create his own persona, the Hobgoblin. A fan favorite, the Green Goblin is the most recognizable of Spider-Man's foes, and has become iconic for his use of bizarre devices and weapons. These include his devastating pumpkin bombs and gloves that discharge pulses of electricity. Since his inception, the Green Goblin has gone on to cause deadly mischief throughout various forms of media, the most notable of which is in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, in which he was portrayed by actor Willem Dafoe. Hello, my dear. 